So, welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video. We're down here in the simplydiag.net community hub. Join us for free on www.simplydiag.net and come and see what all the fuss is about. Real-time technical support on demand every morning of the week when I'm in the workshop. So come and join us, come and ride along with us. So we've got here 2016 Vauxhall Estate with a permanent fault code for the ambient air temperature. That's the outside air temperature sensor. It's already had a new sensor and that didn't fix it. So the workshop that's selling the vehicle has brought it to us, obviously for some specialist diagnostic work and troubleshooting. You can see the bumper is not on the car. We've currently got it plugged in now into, we've got the autocom plugged into it. So this is the autocom icon. Uh, available from Diagnostic Connections and EC Tuning. There's the icon, there's the interface. Yeah, cracking bit of kit. Really good pass through, great pass through tool if you're doing uh, J2534. It's also a really, really good diagnostic tool for everyday use in the workshop. Service resets, technical information, live data, all that sort of stuff, live data graphing. So we can see here. I'm actually in the instrument panel and it's run the checks for ambient air and it's showing minus 40 degrees Celsius. So for those that don't know, anytime a temperature sensor is showing minus 40, that normally means, there are exceptions, but that normally means that the sensor is open circuit. And as it happens, it is on this vehicle at the moment, open circuit because the bumper's off but there's no, even when it's connected, there's no temperature display in the instrument panel and it's still showing minus 40 in the live data. So where does it live? Let's show you walk this way. So this is the front bumper of the vehicle. You can see we've got the parking sensor, wiring loom. We've got the radiator, the grill shutter motor here. And then on this part of the loom here, that's your ambient air temperature sensor. It's a two wire sensor. So basically what happens with that is it sends, the computer sends five volts down one line and earth down another. And the temperature depend of the sensor will alter the resistance inside the sensor. And it, so it knows what temperature it is. That fits in that little hole down there behind there. We've got it unplugged at the moment. All this wiring from under the bumper comes into this one connector that's on the front of the vehicle. So let's get away back to the front of the vehicle. So we're using um, the original manufacturer's information from our awesome community partners, All Data. And we're looking at the instrument panel wiring diagram here. There's our ambient air temperature sensor, okay. We can see from the symbol there that it's a, oh, shouldn't have gone back there. We can see there it's a, it's a pull down circuit. So five volts coming in, a ground path going back to the instrument cluster. Depending on the temperature, this will adjust the voltage. We can also see we've got one connector, two connector, three connectors. Where do those connectors live? If we click on that now, X100, it will tell us here left hand drive or right hand drive okay we'll go on the right hand drive one it gives us the connector the wire colors the pin pin out and everything what color the connector is so it's a 16 pin sealed black connector okay so we know which connector we're looking for and it gives us the pin assignment the wire colors the wire gauges and everything Really, really, really great information for us. Okay, so we go over here. This is that connector. This is the X100 connector. We can see there we've got our blue gray and our blue black twisted pair as per the wiring diagram. We've got it front, put, front probed using the Hubby Tools breakout lead kit into the mechanic mindset multimeter. Thanks, Darren, you're awesome. And we can see now with it open circuit, we've only got two, call it 2.8 volts. Okay, that should be five volts. We're going five volts in, path back to ground. But at the moment, this moment in time, 
We don't know whether we've got a high resistance on the five volt line pulling it down or the way, whether we've got a bad ground, okay? The easiest way to test that is if we get another jump lead. So we'll take our, our fuse. So it's an inline fuse holder that I rigged up myself. Two four mil bananas, because we all know bananas are the future. We'll stick a test probe on one end, a ground clip on the other. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna give it a good ground. If that meter jumps to five volt, we know the problem's on the earth wire, on the ground path. If it stays where it is, we know the problem is on the signal wire, is on the five volt line. Really quick and easy test to do. You've got to be sure of your wiring colors because obviously you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be putting a path to ground to, all right, a five volt sensor would be okay. But if you did it to anything else, you might cause irreparable damage. So always be sure Refer to the manufacturer's wiring diagrams and be sure of what you're testing, what the circuit is, before you start manipulating and bypass testing. The safer way to do it would be to use an incandescent test line, like uh, this awesome one that we got from one of, our, one of our community members. So the safest way to do it would be to use an incandescent test light. That acts like a current limiting device but I'm pretty sure what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna put a straight ground onto that, onto that, and we'll see, does this number change? So we're gonna go onto the, this is the, this is the ground path here. And all I'm gonna do, apply a ground, does my number change? Not really. So we know now that the problem is not on the ground path. We know that the problem is actually on the five volt line. So that enables us to narrow down the testing a little bit further what we can go what we can do then if we refer back to the diagram so if we refer back to the diagram we can also see that's the x100 we're at there we've got another connector x150 and then x210 so basically these wires i'm going to turn my torch on these wires go from here around the loom underneath the battery tray all the way back to the vehicle, to that big black connector there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna check the voltage at that black connector. And if we've got five volts there on those two wires with that connector disconnected, we know then that the high resistance is somewhere between that point and this point down here. So that's what we're doing next. We've got the coolant bottle out. Now, if you're not sure how to, how to remove components, how to gain access to components, that's where all data comes in again, the OEM information. So, you'll see here, I could do right, right click, opening new tab. There's the, how do we take the bottle off? So it shows us we've got a clip, and all we do is we pull the bottle forward and out. So we know how to take stuff apart without breaking it. Tech Tip Thursday, hope you found that interesting. Come and join us for free, simplydag.net. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, you're awesome.